I like how it asks now, you know, because it's being recorded, if you want to leave the meeting or stay on. <laughs> it's good. Um, okay, well, thank you everyone for joining our very first masterclass, which will be a series of masterclasses that we're going to be running in the next couple of months. So these will be recipes that we want to showcase with you that require some technique. Um, recipes are a bit more, you know, a bit more chefy, just to take your culinary skills to another level. So these will be very quick Zoom sessions. We don't think they'll go over 45 minutes. We're hoping between 30 and 45 minutes. Uh, these will be recorded so you can always watch back. Please do also share these masterclasses with your friends and family, even those you know who are thinking about a Thermomix. These are great uh, little sessions to give them a really good idea of, um, of what the Thermomix can do. Um, and if you do invite some friends over, please do let me know because if they're on, you can get host rewards. And this month is the last month to get the, the two mini thermo servers, um, which are great in winter for single servings of soup, for sauces. I love it when I do my mushroom sauce and I pop it in the mini thermo servers. It just keeps, keeps that sauce nice and hot whilst we're having dinner. So it is a last month for those. So if you want to get your hands on them, you've got to do it quickly. Host that demo, either virtual or face-to-face, -face. speak to your consultant and, um, and they can organize that for you. All right, so we're going to get started, but also before we do a bit of housekeeping, please do come off mute if you want to ask some questions. I'm not sure if any of you are actually cooking along with us this morning. Can we have a, if you are, let me know. And if I do need to slow down because you are cooking along, also let me know. Um, yeah, and you can hop on the chat also if you want to ask some questions. We'll be monitoring the chat as well. All right, so we're going to start off with Elia. So Elia first is going to show us the, uh, the oh, oh my gosh, this is bad. I know it's Kringle something. Elia, help me out. <laughs> Estonian Kringle? Estonian Kringle, that's right. So... Elia is going to show us how to, it looks like before we actually get stuck into, into making it. So over to you, Elia. Yeah, so I made it this morning and because it was super cold this morning, when I was proving the dough, I, I sat it on top of a, a thermo server with boiling water. So just a little tip because um, it is cold these mornings now. Um, but it, my house smells amazing, cinnamon and all that stuff. Now I did, um, so this is what it looks like, if you can see. Um, it does say walnuts, and I did add warm walnuts, but I had um, an apple as well. I chopped it up at the, at the walnut stage and because I love apple and walnut and cinnamon, like that flavor will be amazing. Now, I did also just mix up the, um, the icing um, for the top. So it says to, you know, weigh the icing sugar and the egg white in a bowl and then just mix it by hand. But what is this mixing by hand? So I just put the butterfly whisk in and I mixed it in my thermomix. So um, I, I just mixed it for a few seconds. So I'll just do that little that little egg um, icing wash now, egg wash. So I think you can see, and just with a little brush after it's come out of the oven, which mine just did, um, and you just put the icing on top. So yeah, I can't wait to try this, guys. It's perfect for um, afternoon tea, morning tea, dessert, anything. <laughs> And it smells so good and super easy. You'll see when Amanda makes it just how easy it was. It is, um, and it looks fancy, but um, super, super simple, which is awesome. So that's it with the icing, just icing sugar and the egg white. So in the dough, I used um, an egg yolk. So, you know, you just use the egg white for this icing on top. And that's it. It looks so professional. And I bet by no means am professional, but with the Thermomix, I am. So have a look. How good's that? So that's what Amanda's will look like. Elia, that looks amazing. And thank you so much for hopping on and showing us the finished product because now we're going to hop over to Amanda who's going to show us how to put it all together. Awesome. Bye. Thank you. Enjoy your Estonian cream with your friends this afternoon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hi guys, can we hear me? Yes, we can. 
Excellent. All right. So like Elliot said, she proofed her dough. Um, me this morning as well, it was cold. So by the heater and nice and easy. So it's sitting in there ready to roll out in a minute. Um, so because we obviously don't have time to sit and wait for the dough to proof, the next step for that is to actually do the sugar and cinnamon that's going to go on top. And also, like Ilya, I've um, I've got some walnuts and I've got apple and I've also thrown some sultanas in as well. Make it a little bit more kid-friendly. Um, share it around a little bit. So my next step is just to make the cinnamon sugar, which will be very quick. So for our cinnamon sugar, all we've got is 50 grams of butter and we've got 60 grams of sugar. So I'm going to put that into my bowl. We've got two tablespoons of ground cinnamon. That's nice and cinnamony, which is great. One. Two. I don't mind going over a little bit when it comes to cinnamon. I do love it. Okay, so we're just going to mix it up. Um, also, your butter does need to be quite soft for this. Mine might not be soft enough, but if it's not, we can just put the heat up a little bit. Seconds, give it a whip around. Turn up a little bit of fire if we need to. Hey, Amanda. Yeah. Maybe if you can just lower your camera a bit so we can get a, a bigger view of the um of the dough to roll out. Is that okay? Perfect. Is that better? Is yeah, it? that's much better. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. All right, so it's just to preheat the oven, which I've already done, or going as we talk. Um, all right, so my butter probably wasn't quite uh, soft enough, so I'm just going to give it a little bit here. I also had the butter sitting by the heater this morning, so probably could have just been a little bit longer. And if you need to, just put the heat up on your thermomix, just to heat it up a little bit. I just put on 37 and then give it a mix, and that will give it. About 10 seconds, and this should make it a lot better. Go. Okay. So I'm going to let you all know I'm not very good at rolling the dough into a perfect shape, but we don't need to be perfect, okay? So I know Sandra's not always amazing, but I'm not quite as good as hers. I'll stop that now. I don't know if you can see, but that's much better. We'll be able to sprinkle that after. All right. So now, we've got your dough. So we were also discussing a bit earlier too, if your dough doesn't come together as well as it should, just add a little bit more liquid. Because I found if I put the exact amount of milk in this, it was a little bit crumbly. So a little bit more liquid and we'd get there. Okay. So I've had to get the big rolling pin out for this one. All right, so we're going to just give it a roll. Okay, get it nice and thin. That's the key, nice and thin. Now, I don't know if you can see there, it's supposed to be a rectangle, but <laughs> they're kind of circle slash rectangle, but that's okay. All right, so we're going to get that out like that. Good Sunday morning workout. Yeah, this rolling pin is from the cake shop. I use it for my fondant. We get around this side of the bench because it gets quite long. There we go. Actually, the rolling pin is doing most of the work for me. All right. I might just need to screw it up just a little bit. Because we're not quite a very good shape. And it wants to stick if you use your thermo mat. Nice and easy. All right, so I do need to just get those edges down. Um, it also says on the recipe to use fresh, um, oh God, I can't think of it. Fresh, uh, oh, how do I mind? Yeast. Yeast. And it says 15 grams. So I didn't have fresh, I only had dry yeast, which was fine. I just used half the amount. Okay. Thanks, Sandra. I had a mind blank there for a second. All right. 
I'm just going to get these edges out. So you can see I have nowhere near a rectangle, but that's okay. Amanda, that looks perfect. You okay? Yeah, I think you're good to go. <laughs> All right, yep, we are. Okay. So now I've got the display. I'm going to nice and heavy for the new pie. So I'm going to sprinkle on my sugar, just spread it around a bit, sprinkle it, sprinkle it, sprinkle it. Okay. So I'm just going to push that around a bit. I probably should let that sit a little bit longer, but that's okay. Amanda, you can probably even press it down with your fingers. Yeah. On the dough. Yeah. Yeah. And then with the warmth from your hands, that sugar will melt. It will. It is nice and soft. It doesn't look it, but it is nice and soft. It's just, I'm probably not, I should have used my thermo spatula, which was nice and hard. Not a soft one, but that's okay. All right, so we're nice and spread. Full disclaimer, I did wash my hands before <laughs> before doing this. All right, so we're nice and spread. Just don't go right to the edges. Just leave it a little bit out like that. That's fine. Just quickly wash my hands. Okay, so now I'm going to put over my apple and cinnamon, my apple and sultanas and walnuts. Just sprinkle it over. Because it's got the apple in it, it's a bit wet. Whereas if it was just in nuts, it'd be nice and dry and sprinkle quite powdery, but that's okay. So if and you've just joined, the recipe doesn't actually say to add walnuts and apple, no. but Amanda thought it would be a great addition uh, to add this to the recipe. She wanted to, to share that with you, which I think is is awesome. That will really take this sprinkle to another level. And even you could maybe try some chopped chips. I think that would be good as well, if you wanted to. All right, so that's what we've got. Can you all see that? All right, so now comes the rolling, which is very easy. It's a very workable dough, it's not sticky. Okay, so if you roll it quite tight, if possible, Okay, you can actually get a good roll on it like that. I don't know if you can tell, but it is a very, very workable dough. Um, I used a whole apple. Sorry, someone just asked how much apple. I used a whole apple, but I mean, you could do whatever you like. I used 50 grams of sultanas and 50 grams of nuts. Okay, so then we're going to bring the end, edge over like that. All right. Okay, so we've got a lot we have now is a log. And you want to put the fold side down. Okay. Now never cut onto your thermo mat. So I just put it onto a chopping board. I can just log that out a little bit like that. Stick it on a chopping board. Okay. Now we're not going to cut right through because we want to keep one at the end so we can plait it. So leave maybe that much at the end. Spread it out a little bit. Sharp knife and just go down the middle, straight through, straight through. Now, I've never tried it with the apple, so I'm hoping it all stays in there. We don't have an epic fail. Okay. Don't want to chop through my thermo mat. All right, so now we can get rid of the board because we've cut it already. So Amanda, did I just notice that you didn't go right to the end on one edge and on the other edge you went right to the end? You cut Correct. right to the end? Sorry, yes, I did. So I've left a little bit of a knob here. It's not cut through. It stops about there. And now we're right through the other end. Okay, now we're going to open it up. My knife didn't go right through. That's not very good. Just the last little bit. Okay, so it is a bit wet with the apple. Okay, whereas if, it's, if you're just using um, your nuts, it's quite dry. But that's okay, it'll still work. All right, so just squeeze it back together and flip it over. 
Can you say that or drop me to lower the camera? Oh, that's not very well. Yeah. So what you have ideally is, I'm going to pick the camera up and show you. So you've got two splits like that. All right. Now, what we'll do, we just squeeze them together a little bit like that. And we're going to braid it like in braids here. So just go one over like that, one over like that, one over like that, and one over like that. Okay, so ideally now we have a braided piece of dough. And all we do, we're about to put that on. Okay, and then we just twist it into a circle. Now it looks quite small, but once it rises, it's definitely not small. And I just twist the two ends around each other so we've got a full circle. Then I'll put the camera up on over the top. So we do have a full circle. And then we just slide it into the bowl, I'm to say. Spread it out a little bit. But once you bake it, the end will, once you bake it, the end will rise out. We probably put it, I probably could have cut that just a little bit deeper to make those flares a bit further out, but that's okay. The so apple and sultana is a new addition, so we, it's a little bit better. All right, now you keep following in our thing, I miss. We hit the oven, which is uh, okay. Now we're just going to put it in the oven and let it rise, and it'll take about 20 25 minutes. Just keep an eye on it. It does go quite brown, which is what you want. That's the cinnamon to the cooking through. But then we're done. That's as easy as that is. That looks amazing already, Amanda. Thank you so much for presenting on how to roll that Estonian Kringle because. Having a look at the picture, it actually looks quite complicated, but when you see somebody do it, it's actually quite simple, isn't it? It's very simple. Just a nice line down the middle and braid it like you would here. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for presenting that with us. Thank and you. Um, enjoy your Estonian Kringle. I will. Thank you very much. See you guys. All right. See ya. Enjoy your Sunday. Amanda has to dash off now. Thank you for coming. All right, so over to me now. I'm going to show you what I'm going to present. I'll uh, show you the finished product first. So I'm going to show you how to make a caramelized fennel and ricotta tart with parmesan crisps. So I'll show you the finished product first. So this is what we are going to end up with. I'm feeling really chefy today. Look at that. <laughs> so I've even got micro herbs there as well so they're actually micro kale that i'm growing in my windowsill so this is what we're going to end up with in the end okay so i came across this recipe i was just scrolling through cookie do and i actually had fennel uh in the fridge and i didn't know what to do with it so the great thing about cookie do is that you can put that ingredient in your search bar so go into in, go into filters put fennel in there and it came up with this recipe that um yeah that i found would be really interesting and the, the whole family loved it so i thought this would be awesome to to present to you guys um so we're going to start with uh we're going to do the dough no actually we're not going to do the dough well we are but <laughs> um this recipe has ricotta cheese and the first part of the recipe is actually making your own ricotta cheese so I want to give you some tips around that. So um, if you do make your own, I'm going to be honest, and I got store-bought ricotta cheese for this one today because I didn't have long-life milk. So the best milk to use to make your own ricotta is long-life milk. That's where you get more ricotta. You actually get almost double, um, double the amount of ricotta in the end compared to using um, fresh milk. Uh, so yeah, use long life milk, even like the cheaper, the better. I use Aldi brand and I get about 300 grams of ricotta cheese. For this recipe, you only need 170. So then you're left with beautiful, beautiful ricotta for, for your sandwiches, for whatever. So we're just going to skip that step. But if you guys, I, I want to share a tip with you. If you're skipping steps rather than tapping next, 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 
if you just go to the three circles there and go to recipe detail, and you can also do this in the TM5, just scroll down to the steps and then you can tap on the step that you want. So you don't have to keep going next, 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 next which can be quite annoying. Uh, not skim or low fat, long life milk. Yeah, you can, but you won't get as much ricotta. It has to be full cream. Um, okay, so we're gonna add, so we're gonna start off with our pastry. We're gonna add 200 grams of flour. Okay, there's a little bit more, it doesn't matter. 100 grams of butter. <clears throat> Just tear that, see if I have 100. I think I have a little bit more butter, that's why I added it a little bit more flour, because it's double the flour to the butter. And half a teaspoon of some sea salt, oh, it says a quarter. And I've actually milled Parmesan cheese in the bowl just before we started to do my Parmesan crepes so I can show you what they look like. Um, and I didn't wash the bowl so I can get a bit of that Parmesan through, through the dough as well. Okay, so now we're just gonna mix that all together. So it comes to like a sand consistency. <laughs> Okay, and the next thing we're going to add is 50 grams, 50, it says 50 to 60 grams of chilled water. So it just turns out like that. So that butter was cold out of the fridge. It does need to be cold. And um, 50 grams. I found that it says 50 to 60. I found that 50 worked. So just adding 50 grams. And then we're going to need that just for a few seconds. Okay, it actually needs it or mixes it together for 15 seconds. <clears throat> Just get my mat. Okay, so this does need to go in the fridge now for 15 minutes just to chill so that butter hardens a bit so it's a lot easier to, to roll out. All right, so it is a crumbly mixture as well. All right, that's what it looks like. So what you do, you just tip it onto your thermo mat. If you haven't seen these mats yet, they're the new ones with the um, circles, which I find really, really good for, um, you know, when you're doing pizza, pizza dough, and you want to roll out the dough to that perfect size, or you're doing some, um, Tortillas, I found it was great for tortillas. So you can get these at host rewards as well. And I think as a host rewards, like $25 and you get the oven mat as well. Um, so definitely worth hosting to get your hands on one of these. All right, so you just uh, want to bring it together with your hands. And I grab all the little bits that have gone astray like this. <laughs> all right. Okay, so it's come together really nice. And now do you remember how crumbly it was? So, so the warmth from our hands warms up that butter and brings it all together. So now I'm just gonna wrap it and pop it in the fridge for 15 minutes. Then I'll show you how to roll that out. Okay, so whilst that's happening, um, so it says to do all that, pop it in the, in the fridge. Now, the next thing, oh, I'm just gonna grab my other bowl. So, so this is how, how good it is to have a second bowl. So if you don't have one, um, you can get one this month for $99 with a Thermomix and they're normally 375, so it's a bargain. So if you're thinking about a second Thermomix or you've got a TM5 or TM31 and you're upgrading, this is the perfect opportunity. So get in touch with your consultant because that finishes in, oh, finishes on Tuesday. So there's only a couple of days to go. So now I've got my fennel here. I'm going to add in, so it's 200 grams of fennel. So one fennel does about two batches of these, um, of these tarts. All right, now we're going to chop it up. Let me just grab my measuring cup, chop it up. Four seconds on speed six. All 
All right, so it is a, a fine chop. And so it looks like that in the end. Oh, that smells amazing. We're gonna scrape it down. We're gonna add some butter. This is what this is going to do. It's going to saute with the butter. So one about 20 grams. There we go. And now it says a teaspoon of raw sugar. Now the first time I made this, I actually found it quite sweet. So what can you swap it for, Margaret? I'm not sure. I'm actually not sure. If there, is there anyone on the, on the session that can give us some ideas of what we can swap fennel with? It won't give you the same flavour, but I'm thinking, um, oh, what do you call it? Leek. Like a leek tart. I think leek would work really well, actually. Oh, now I'm getting the salt. Okay, so raw sugar. Yeah, I found it. I, I, could, I could taste the sugar in it. So I'm actually going to do half a tablespoon instead of one tablespoon. Okay, so I'm not a fan of um, sweet with, with the savoury. So I prefer to, to keep the sugar down. And now 30 grams of apple cider vinegar. Okay. And now that's going to cook for 12 minutes. <clears throat> now, I am making some changes to, to this recipe because, to be honest, I did find it a bit confusing. And I've passed that feedback to, um, to our recipe developers. And that's, that's something else that's really great about Cookie Do is if you come across a recipe that's not quite working, uh, you can always pass that feedback on and um, and then they have a look at, um, Borgberg will have a look at that recipe and see if there's any changes that can be made. So whilst that's happening, I'm going to grab, I forgot to grab the silver beet. Okay. All right, so we need about 30 grams of silver beet. This is actually spinach, um, but same, same. You can easily substitute. Um, so whilst it's doing that for 12 minutes, I'm going to grab the dough. All right, it hasn't been in the fridge for 15 minutes, but I know it's a really workable dough. So we can um, go ahead to this step without any, any issues. All right, so now we want to roll this out very thin and we're going to line some, um, some of these um, little pie. Oh, I can now I feel like Amanda, I can't think what these are called, but they have, sorry, just getting a call. Um, but they have these removable bottoms and we want to, you, I don't need to line these and I don't need to spray them. They're really good. I think I got them from uh, Woolworths. You can get these from, I got them from Woolworths quite some time ago. Um, so to roll out the dough, I've got one of these um, rolling pins as well. And so what I do is I just sprinkle a bit of, bit of flour, top and bottom. And, and then I just start rolling. And I'll show you what I do to get the, the perfect size for this tray. Because sometimes it can be a bit tricky of how to get that in there. Oh, I'm just getting a call. I put my phone on, do not disturb, and I'm still getting calls. All right. So you just roll it out. You want it to, you want it to be quite thin. So I think it's, I, I did this to like a couple of millimetres. So quite thin. So see how like it hasn't been in the fridge for 15 minutes, but it's such a great dough to work with. And you can use this recipe for any um, uh, like uh, quiches and, and so on. Yeah. All right. And if you were to line a big, um, so say you didn't want to do mini ones and you want to do a big one, you could do that as well. Then what you do is you just do that. And then you just roll it on top of your pastry pastry dish. 
okay now with the little ones because of the size what i normally do is is i pop the pastry dish on there and then with a silicone spatula so again remember you can't use a knife here with your silicone spatula is i just go actually that's not going to work um okay with a spoon so you want uh you want to go a little bit larger than the dish because remember that's got to go up to the edges okay and then so i'm only going to show you one and then you just pop it in there and with your fingers just go around and squeeze the sides and then you've got these dough left over you can just get your rolling pin and do that and get rid of the the extra dough and you've got this perfect little pie dish tart dish okay now this has to be pre-baked before we put our filling in if you don't do that then your pastry goes soggy so but we want it nice and crispy so there's nothing nice when you crunch into this and you and you hear that crunch so you're only going to achieve that if you pre-bake it so what i do is i have i put like little sheets of baking paper let me just get this dough out of the way all right and then i squeeze down as well just to make sure that all those edges are, are firm against the the pie dish now i love using these if you haven't seen these in our in our mix shop yet these baking weights they make they're made out of ceramic and you just pop them on the dish like this and then that goes in the oven so if you don't have these you can use beans you can use uh, dried chickpeas you can even use rice but just make sure yeah that you do put the baking paper first and then that way with the weights then that it doesn't puff up and you you get a nice pie shell which i have one here pre-made to show you what it looks like so there there's our pie shell and remember i said i didn't grease grease this but they um yeah non-stick which is really great okay so we still have a few minutes to go here in our uh fennel mix so i can i can smell that uh that vinegar coming through but i can also smell a bit of the sugar as well so it counteracts really nicely um so now the next part of the recipe actually says to steam silver beets so to put the silver beet or the spinach um into your varoma but what i found is that the mixture was already so dry that there wasn't enough liquid in there to create steam to cook this in the varoma so i'm just going to show you what i do instead which from doing uh other recipes uh with um uh with tarts uh gave me this idea so um all right let's just have a look at how that's going all right so as you can see i'll just get a bit of that steam so that's quite dry so i don't think that will create a lot of steam to to really wilt this spinach like i want it to or, or the silver beet like i want it to to wilt so i'm going to add it directly into the bowl so 30 grams okay Oh wow, look at that. Exactly. I didn't pre-weigh that. <laughs> Perfect. 31 grams. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a chop because I don't want leaves that big in, in the pie. So I'll just get out of the recipe by tapping on home and I'll go for like for speed five for like a few three seconds. Okay, and that's giving it a nice chop together with the with the fennel. Now I'll show you. Yeah. So like that. Now, because we want that silver beet to cook a little, I am going to continue with the recipe, but instead of using the varoma, remember it said to put in the varoma. So let me just tap on 
back to the recipe. I'm going to proceed to cook it, but in the bowl rather than in the Varoma. Um, that also saves you washing up on the, on the Varoma as well, because it's only two minutes. So well, there wouldn't be a lot of washing up anyway with, with silver beet. So we're going to just let that wilt for those, uh, for those two minutes. Because it's directly in the bowl, you also don't need to leave it in there for, for that long either. And then we're ready to, to add our, our milk, our cream and our eggs. And I'll show you how to do the rest. And I'll also show you how to do the, the, the Parmesan crisps as well, which look like, let me just grab one. Look how cute they look. They look so chefy. And you can um, pop this on, say if you do a risotto and you've got some guests coming over, you can do these Parmesan crisps and have it um, as a topping for a risotto. And when it goes on top of your hot risotto, it actually melts into the risotto, which is beautiful. Okay. All right, I would say that is done. Now it is creating quite a bit of steam actually. So, you know, maybe the Varoma could work. Um, but I, I haven't tried it. I just put it directly in the bowl. So it's just cooling down. So that's a new safety feature. If you've done your software update um, with your Thermomix, then you would have gotten that update. So just adds a few minutes to the end. Okay, so that's really good actually. It doesn't need more than that. So as long as just it's wilted. Okay, um, now it's just telling us to roll out the dough. We've done all that. So you can do that during those 12 minutes that the uh, that it was cooking to save you time. Now we're going to add two eggs. Now, because I've added the, uh, that's quite hot. If I throw the eggs in there right now, I'll probably cook the eggs. So I'm going to add my milk first. All right, so that's another tip. And um, I think that's where they should change the recipe as well. So um, I'm just afraid that if I throw in the eggs in such a, a hot bowl, it'll cook the eggs. All right. So now I'm going to add in some pouring cream. So 30 grams of milk, 30 grams of pouring cream. Okay. And now because I've got liquid in there, I'm happy to put in the eggs. <laughs> All right. So it actually is, um, goes on top of the liquid and not the hot fennel. And some sea salt. So just half a teaspoon of salt, some ground black pepper. I just put a pinch or maybe two. It does add some really nice flavor. And now we're just going to mix that together. So for 10 seconds. So how easy is it so far? Pretty easy, right? A very workable dough, very easy dough. Um, as long as you have all your ingredients, it's really good. Okay. All right, so we have our mix for the tarts. So I'm just going to pop the Thermomix aside. Just going to scrape down the size of the bowl. Okay, and now to assemble. So this is where it gets really easy. So you've got your pre-baked pie shells or tart shells. I just don't know what to call it today. Um, we've got our ricotta cheese. So the first thing you do is pop some dollops of ricotta cheese in the tart. So I, I did, so this recipe for this pie shell, tart shell, here I go again, <laughs> did, it did six of them. I've got eight of them, but I managed to get six because they're big. If you had smaller ones, you could get more. The recipe says it's a serving of, of eight. But I, I did get six because I think I was also over, overly generous with, um, with the filling. So we add in our ricotta, even better if you've made it yourself. Um, we're going to add some, uh, what do you call it, green olives that you've just chopped in half. Now it says optional, but oh, it just gives it such a nice flavor. So you get that savory. And, and now we're going to just pour in some of the, the, the pie mix tart mix. Oh, here I go again. Okay. So just like that. Now, something else that I love to do is um, 
I like to put some bacon on top just to make it crispy. So rather than mixing bacon through it, I get some bacon pieces. Ooh. Sorry, this bacon was defrosting, still a bit frozen, but it doesn't matter. And I just cube the bacon. And there we go, that's actually really good. And I just put it on top. And that way, because it's on top and it's not mixed through the tart, it goes really nice and crispy. So again, that crunch that you get when you tuck into it is amazing. And so that will go in the oven just for 15 to 20 minutes. Um, have a look at it because mine did need a little longer than 20 minutes. So it could really firm up. And once that's done, I'm going to show you then how to, so once it's done, that's what it looks like when it comes out of the oven, okay? So then we then you wanna decorate it. So this is where you're gonna take it to a chefy level. I'm gonna show you how to do the Parmesan crisps. All right, so you need a baking tray with some baking paper or if you don't want to use baking paper you can use our oven mats okay that can go on your tray like that so I'm going to use the oven mat and again when you host you actually get a thermo mat and the oven mat as a pack um, just for yeah I think just for hosting it's $25 it's an absolute bargain so you need your Parmesan cheese. So I've milled the Parmesan cheese in the Thermix. It's only, I probably did like 100 grams here. Um, and it's 10 seconds on speed nine, super quick. So that's all you need to do for that. And it's actually part of the recipe. However, the recipe does say to add fennel seeds with the Parmesan. Now, because my kids can be a bit fussy, I've decided just to omit the fennel seeds in the Parmesan crisps because they love Parmesan crisps and I don't want to stuff it up for them. So I'll just keep it simple, but you can um, try it with the recipe as per the recipe. And then just, you just add like half a teaspoon or if you want it bigger, you can do, sorry, a teaspoon, tablespoon. And you just lay it on a tray like that, as many as you want, flatten it out into a nice circle. Or if you don't want a circle, you can do like a, an oval, so whatever shape you like. And then you pop it in the oven at 200 degrees and you just let it melt in the oven until it bubbles and until you get a little bit of color and then, th then you take it out of the oven. Now it takes around seven minutes on an oven that's on 200 degrees. And that's when you end up with, um, because it bubbles, then you get these nice little holes through the Parmesan crisp, which uh, make it look really beautiful on, on that tart. And that's, that's all you do. We're done. All right. So I'm just wondering if anyone has any questions. Oh, Kmart has them. Thanks, Elia. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, Kmart is awesome. Uh, it does. I'm feeling so chefy with this. <laughs> I actually surprised myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've actually done this quite a, quite a number of times and um, the family love it. And we have guests coming this afternoon as well, just like you, Elia, and they are going to love these for an afternoon snack. So you can serve this with some salad or even just on their own. Really nice. So I just wonder if anyone has any questions because we're finished and we did it in 45 minutes, which I'm stoked. Really good. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Well, thank you for joining our very first masterclass. It was really lovely having you on. Keep a lookout for um, for the rest of our the, our the masterclasses that we have coming up. Friday evening, we have a French bistro masterclass. I'm going to be showing you how to do the perfect crepes. And we're also going to be doing French onion soup. Then we have a Greek masterclass coming up. That one's going to be really good. Um, and also a, an Italian masterclass. So I know we're going to be doing gnocchi, gnocchi for that one. So if you've never done gnocchi like myself, hop on so you can learn how to make some. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great weekend or what's left of it. Great Sunday. And I will see you here next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.
Hey, Sandra, my guest's canceled. So 